Hi friends, it's Taylor. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be walking you through my zero based budget and monarch money, which is part two of my 2024 financial goals mini series that I'm doing as we get closer to the new year. Part one was me creating my sinking funds and monarch. So if you want to check that out, I will leave it linked below. So with Mint shutting down, I've noticed a lot of people coming to Monarch Money from Mint and being a former Mint user myself a couple of months ago, I wanted to talk about how I set up my budget and Monarch and how I reconcile my balances at the end of the month between Monarch and my bank. So first, let's go into the budget structure that you will see here on the plan page. Income is going to be any money that you earn in a month between your checking, savings, and manual accounts. Expenses are gonna be anything that you spent during the month, which is from your checking accounts and your manual accounts only. And then contributions is just going to cover transfers to your savings accounts and manual accounts only. I'm gonna head over to the account page so you all can see. So these accounts here are synced with Monarch, which means that they will automatically import all of my transactions and my bank balances on a daily basis. And then for my loans section, all of these are manual accounts. Manual accounts mean that you monitor them manually, you know, self-explanatory, and they allow you to import or create transactions per account. Now, if I go up here to edit account, you'll see by default, these three will be unchecked, which means they will all be visible. They will all affect your net worth and they will affect your cash flow and budgets. Now, for some of my accounts, I have opted to hide them from my cash flow and budgets because if I didn't hide them, they would cancel out certain transactions that I have in my budget. So I'll show you all an example. If I go up here to edit account and let's say I unhide this from cash flow and budgets, and then I go to my budget and I'll go here to wealth. Now it has $48 left over because I added this manual transaction, which is a credit towards that debt balance, a positive and a negative of the same number gives us zero. So back on the budget, it looks like I didn't pay for that loan. For all of these debt accounts here, I opt to hide them from the cash flow and budget so they don't mess up my numbers on the budget page and I can actually account for payments that I've made. Now, investment and retirement accounts are not going to be tracked in your budget automatically because these are view balance only accounts. So if I click onto my 401k, you'll see that it shows me my balance, but I can't actually see any transactions. A lot of people have asked Monarch to add that feature so that we can see the individual transactions that happen on our investment and retirement accounts. But because this is not a built-in feature right now with Monarch, I have come up with one or two workarounds and we'll talk about those later in the video. Now we're gonna go over the categories that I have in my budget, which I have changed just a little bit. Under planned, I have paychecks, which is the amount that I get from my job. Rollover is something we'll talk about in a minute, but it's basically the money I had left over in my account in the previous month. I have a category for interest. This is because I have high yield savings accounts and I usually get interest every month. As for the potential income categories, I typically do not plan for these because they're only potential. If I happen to get money that fits one of these categories, I will log it but I typically leave them at zero at the beginning of the month. And then under expenses, I have needs, wants, wealth, and other. Other is where I keep any categories that I'm not budgeting for, but they previously had transactions attached to these categories, so I can't hide or disable them or else I will lose that data. So I always keep this category at zero as well. And then if something comes up, then I can just adjust the budget here. So under needs, I have rent and utilities, next month's rollover, which again, we will talk about a little later. Groceries, household, and pet care are now three separate categories. And then transportation and renter's insurance are pretty much the same. Under wants, I have health and wellness, personal subscriptions, business, 
restaurants, fund money, and gifts and loans again. Under wealth, I have debts, loans, and investments. I have extra debt payments, which is something I will talk about in my next video when I create my budget forecast, but this is a way for me to track how much money I am putting extra towards my debt outside of the minimum payments, which is here in the debts and loans sections. And then contributions is going to be a placeholder category, which I will show you all in just a moment. I haven't started contributing to my tithes yet, but that is something I am starting this month. And safety net is my term for any unplanned expenses that come up in the month. For my contributions, I have all of my sinking funds here, which I went into detail in my sinking funds video. Once again, that will be linked below. Next, I wanna show you all my tags. Now, budget categories and tags are a little bit different. Budget categories have their own line item, as you can see here, and you can set a specific amount that you wanna budget for that category. However, tags can be used across multiple categories to further categorize those transactions. For example, when I moved in April, I decided to tag these specific transactions with this tag for moving in April, so that way I could see how much I spent on this specific move. Now, when I go back and let's say I do the July move, I can see that it's still under that same category, moving expenses, but it has a different tag. And this is for the July move. And when you scroll down, you'll be able to see how much you spent with all of the transactions that are tagged with that particular tag. So tags can be extremely useful when you're trying to calculate specific use cases of your money, which is why I love them. And my groups of tags include work, family and friends, which are in orange, my moving plans, which is in yellow, the purple is kind of miscellaneous, and then this light blue is going to be any time that I traveled. So as I said earlier, transactions for the investment accounts and retirement accounts can't be tracked automatically because Monarch only imports the balances and basically no other data. So if you want to bypass that, you have two different options. One, you can create a placeholder category. You can name it whatever you want. Mine is called contributions. And what I do is type in the amount that I plan to contribute to my investment and or retirement accounts by the end of the month. So in my case, I transfer $5 into my acorns every month. So I will type in five, and now you'll see that that $5 has now been given a job in my budget instead of just been left up here in the top right corner. And because this is a placeholder category, it will never have an actual amount, but at least you'll be able to assign it somewhere in Monarch and you'll know that that money has a job so you don't accidentally assign that $5 to your fund money for the month when in actuality that should have gone to one of your investment accounts. Your second option is to create a manual account and then create a goal attached to that manual account so that it shows up here in your budget. And I will show you all how to do that step by step. We're gonna head over to the accounts page, add account, add a manual account, and you don't wanna choose investments because then it's going to treat it as a balance only account. So you either wanna go with cash or other. I am gonna go with other. We'll call this example retirement. And let's say at the time that I am adding this account to Monarch, I have $10,000 in this retirement account. And I'll click save. Now the account is created and we need to create the goal. So we'll go over to goals, add a goal. And you do not want to select retirement because once again, that is going to treat it as balance only. So you want to select any of these other ones, which are all the same. They just have different names and different images. I'm going to go with savings and click next. And we're going to rename this to example retirement goal and click save next. And if we have 10,000 in there right now, let's say we want to get it up to 20,000. Click next. And then we're going to add accounts for this retirement goal. And there we have that example retirement account that we created. So we'll click that. Now, because this manual account that we created is solely for this retirement goal that we created, 
I'm going to leave this checked where it says always use the entire account balance and I'm going to click done next and we're going to skip these stages but I do talk about this in my sinking funds video so you are welcome to check that out if you want to see how that works and so our goals are showing that we have that 10,000 out of the 20,000 that we want to save and so when I go back to my budget and scroll down to contributions now we are able to have a line item for any contributions we are making to this goal so let's pretend that today I made a transfer between my checking account and this example retirement account. Now we have to take this a step further and do some double entry. So we will have to have a debit transaction go from our checking account to the retirement account and then a credit transaction within the retirement account that goes up by whatever amount we contributed. So we're going to come up here to add transaction and this is going to be the debit. So I transferred $20 from my checking account into the retirement account. And the account is going to be the checking. And then category, we will make this contributions. And we'll click Add Transaction. And then we're also going to add another transaction that credits it. So we're going to do $20 credit. This happened today. And now the account we're going to select is example retirement. And the category is once again going to be contributions. And I'll click add transaction. So this shows that $20 left my checking account and then deposited into the retirement account. Now, the important thing about this is we want to make sure that any transactions in the retirement account are hidden from the budget. Otherwise, it'll look like we never contributed anything because a positive and a negative cancel each other out. So we're going to come over here to the example retirement account and edit account. And we're going to hide from cash flow and budgets and click save. Now, this doesn't look like these are canceling each other out. We're going to take it a step further. Go up here to edit multiple, select both of these and click edit and we're going to assign both of these to the example retirement goal and then click save apply to all two these transactions actually need to be marked as transfer because it is a transfer between accounts now when we go back to the budget we'll see that 20 dollars here this lets us know that we did it right because we did in fact contribute 20 dollars to our retirement account so we're going to type in 20 here so this shows me that out of all the money I earned this month, I transferred $5 into my acorns and transferred another $20 towards my retirement goal. Now, having the manual accounts and goals are not going to be for everyone. If you are the type of person that has multiple transactions per day or per month, then you will have to make sure that you manually add all of those transactions here. You are able to upload transactions using the Monarch Money CSV format, which I think is here. They have an article about it. So that is a bit of a trade. You know, if you want to have those exact numbers and track those transfers, you definitely can, but it is going to take a little bit more work since Monarch doesn't have it set up like that by default. If you do opt to go for this manual account option, you can create rules to help automate that process. I'm here on the rules page and you'll see that I have a lot of rules to reduce the amount of work that I have to do. Now with rules, you have a bunch of different criteria you could play with. For this example, let's say we want to track all transactions for the retirement account and automatically link those to the retirement goal. So you could do it this way and that could save you some time. You could also make sure that you rename the merchant or assign it to a category. You could add tags, you could hide the transaction, whatever you need to do. Some more practical examples could be things that I have. So I have a rule that says if the transaction has acorns in it and the amount is $5, I want this to rename it to acorns investment 
and categorize it as a transfer. I have another one here where if it's connected to my Marcus by Goldman Sachs account, I want it to automatically update to a transfer and I want it to be linked to this particular goal. So you could definitely make this as detailed as you'd like. And one thing to note is you can drag and drop these in certain orders. And that is gonna be important if you have rules that may or may not conflict with each other. My Instacart transactions are a perfect example of this. I wanna make sure that if the original statement for the transaction has Instacart subscript, which is what most of them do, I want it to categorize as Instacart subscription and categorize to groceries. And then after this rule, if it doesn't have subscript and it just has Instacart, then rename it to Instacart groceries and categorize it to groceries. So yes, tracking your transfers is going to take a little bit of work in terms of setting it up at the beginning. But once you figure out what your system is and you create the rules to help automate that process, it makes future budget reviews a lot easier. The next thing I wanna talk about is rollovers. The first one is simply unspent rollovers. Monarch does track these and you can do this by going over to the category of your choice, clicking the gear icon, and then click the toggle where it says, make this category a monthly rollover. You can click this link to learn more, but in short, if you assign money to this category, but you don't spend all of it by the end of the month, it will take whatever amount is remaining and roll it over or add it to next month's budget specifically for that category. So I'm going to click this and let's say we'll start rolling over since September and click save. So I'm gonna go back to September so you can see what this looks like in practice, ignore the negative numbers. But let's say I have $5 in this category and my actual is zero, which means I didn't spend anything. So when I go to October, now it says I have $10. That is the amount that rolled over from last month and five plus five is 10. And because I didn't spend anything on it in October, I go over here to November and it rolls up to 15 because five plus five plus five is 15, so on and so forth. Now, this is not something I would use for the contributions category because I specifically use this for transfers, but you could use it for something like groceries or household or maybe eating out or your fun money. The next type of rollovers are gonna be your bank balance rollovers. And this refers to money that's already in your bank account at the end of the month that will roll over to the next month. Now, Monarch does not allow you to roll over any of your categories, and they also don't have a built-in feature to reconcile your bank balances. But I had to come up with some kind of solution because I don't get paid until the fifth of the month and I need that rollover income to cover me for those five days at the beginning of the month until I get paid. So what I've done is created a placeholder category under income called rollover. This is referring to last month's rollover. And then I'm going to do the same for expenses and call this next month's rollover. Both of these are placeholder categories, which means no transactions will ever come out of them, but they are there so that I have a visual of how much money was left in my account at the beginning and at the end of the month. So I'm actually gonna go back to October because that month is already over and you'll be able to see the balance at the beginning and at the end. As you can see in this screenshot here, at the beginning of October, I had $277 in my bank account. So that is what I put here in this column. And at the end of October, I had $350. And that is what I put here. Now, the reason I put 351 is because Monarch was glitching out, but you can see the actual remaining here is 350. So that's the number that I'm going with. So by including the balance that I had in my bank account at the beginning of the month, I have a more accurate picture of what I can actually afford to spend this month without going in the negative. And for the same reasons, the importance of this next month's rollover account is because I do have bills and expenses that come out in the first five days of the month. So I like to go ahead and allocate this line item for money I need to set aside and not touch so that I'm not in the negative once the first of the month hits. 
So what do you do if you still have money remaining in this left to budget area? I have plenty of videos on my monthly budget routine, but I will just show you all a quick summary of what I do. First, I expand all of my categories and make sure that where possible, it has a zero next to it, which means that every dollar assigned to this category was used. So if I expected $4,000 in income, but then it says I have $745 left over, obviously that $745 is not coming because I earned less than I expected. So I would just come over to the budget column and make it whatever number is here in the actual column. And now it is zero. And I do this for each and every line item going down with the exception of the rollover categories because those are placeholders. Now, let's say for my personal subscriptions, I only planned to spend $15. And then for my business, I thought I was gonna spend 100, but I only spent 40. So now I have leftover money in the business category and I'm underfunded in the personal subscriptions category. If you click on the number next to each line item, it allows you to just move money in between categories. So I am going to move money from the business category to the personal subscriptions. And it looks like we need $18 to bring that to zero. I click save and now it has zeroed out my personal subscriptions line item and I still have $42 left over for business. So if I don't have any other categories that need the extra money, then I can come over here and set this to the actual which is here, so 40 and 40, and that brings us to zero. And now this is grayed out. Now, if you've done that to all of your categories and you're still seeing money left over in this top right corner, then that's when you wanna check your interest and your transfers. This is why I have a separate line item for my transfers, because if I did not include those in my budget, it shows leftover money here. So you wanna make sure you are keeping track of the transfers, whether that is up here in a placeholder category or if you actually have a goal that you need to assign it to. Another thing you want to do is check your interest or any other potential income that you might earn in a month. So in my case, when I click on the interest category, I earned about $9 in interest for this month. All of this interest here is coming from my high yield savings accounts. So in order to make sure that this $9 here applies to my savings accounts down here, I need to go to the transaction and assign it to the goal. If I go to the moving fund and we look at the transactions that happened in October, which would be these three here, you'll see that we have that $4.96 assigned to this account. Even though I manually deposited $1,100, the $5 extra in interest has now been counted as a contribution towards this goal instead of that money just being left up in the top right corner like this. So when you see extra money, make sure you're checking all of your expenses, all of your transfers, and all of your interest. And now that we have this assigned, we'll click this and we are back to zero. All right, everyone, that is it for today's video. I hope you all found it really helpful and I hope it gave you some insight on how to account for every dollar in Monarch in a way that keeps you from overspending and getting a more accurate picture of what your finances look like when you are about to spend. As part of Monarch's promotion to Mint users, they are offering 50% off your first year and a 30-day free trial. You just need to use the code MINT50, which I will be leaving in the description box below. In the next video, I'll be talking about my budget forecast and financial plan, which is my favorite part of the year. And if you want to stay tuned, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you get notified when the video is up. If you have any questions about anything I talked about, leave a comment down below and I'll be happy to help. Other than that, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.